Right now, divorce or separation could be heartbreaking, but the financial implications can be painful too. Here to look at minimising the cost of a relationship breakdown is Amanda Morell. Welcome, Amanda. Hi. This is something you've actually had personal experience with as well. Unfortunately, I have, yes. How did it go? <laughs> <laughs> you get through it, as you do with most challenging life events. Yeah. So what would be your advice to a couple uh, with respect to money and in the breakup process? Well, I, I think if you can handle the whole breakup with maturity and dignity, um, you will, I, I know you will be able to minimize the cost substantially. The biggest cost you'll incur, well, apart from losing half your um, equity that you've built up as a couple, will be to lawyers. Right? right? They really capitalize on this whole process. So if you can actually step back from that process, perhaps go through mediation or work out an arrangement on your own terms, you will spare yourself a lot of money down the road. So if you, if you, you know, it's obviously painful and you're a bit upset and you think that you're entitled mm -hmm. to a bit more and you mm -hmm. go, no, we're going to go down the lawyer route. Right. Probably nine times out of ten, yeah. you're just going to cost yourself money and it'll end up being a, probably a 50-50 split. Absolutely. The courts direct that you, they would uh, divide all the property relationship through a 50-50 arrangement. However, that's not always the case. Right. If somebody is going to suffer an undue economic hardship as a result of the arrangement, for example, maybe a stay-at-home wife who's sacrificed her career, who's got really little to fall back on, um, you know, in some circumstances, the court will, um, you know, uh, give them a bit more of the, the, the assets out of that relationship and compensate for that. So it's not always that, but that's the general rule of thumb. OK, and lawyers yeah. aren't cheap. How much does no. it cost to get a divorce? That's a difficult question. Well, I did this story a while back in talked to a, um, a divorce lawyer from New York and the average divorce there was like hundred hundred fifty thousand dollars in legal costs New Zealand it's a bit more tempered um, some of the lawyers I talked to here said the average is closer to 10 fifteen thousand now you can do it on the cheap but again it requires a lot of maturity and um, uh, sort of an amicable split between your spouse I did it myself and my uh, ex for 175 dollars that's the court filing 175 fee. yes now that's probably the cheapest divorce ever and um, I wouldn't recommend that to everybody because uh, the, I guess the disadvantage in working it out yourself is you might short change yourself uh, out of a huge chunk of money down the road that you don't factor in the valuation of superannuations. Those a lot of so you, you might know, miss something in that. Absolutely, because the the tendency, and particularly for women, is to take the family home in lieu of everything else. And actually, they don't really know what they're inheriting there if they've got long-term mortgages to pay off, if the house depreciates and all that kind of business, right? So in the emotional frenzy of the whole thing, you can end up costing yourself quite a bit of money by just wanting to simply dissolve the relationship and say goodbye to your ex and close the door. It, I mean, is that what happened to you? Your $175 divorce, is there a couple of things you think, oh, I probably should have boxed a bit closer? Uh, you know, that? it's kind of like breaking a cookie in half, you know, sometimes, mm. with, depending on how you're looking at it, somebody always thinks they got more out of the arrangement. I mean, I think at the end of the day, um, probably it was fair for, for us um, um, and uh, you know certainly I could, probably could have benefited from a legal opinion but I'm happy with how things ended so what about um, supports, you know, um, maintenance and mm, that kind of thing? Yeah, there's a lot to consider among the separation process. Some great resources out there to help uh, guide you through it. Um, because you'll have to, uh, if you can sit down at a kitchen table and stare each other in the face, you'll have to go through splitting up the expenses, potentially putting a freeze on joint accounts, assessing joint uh, debts and liabilities, sorting out childcare arrangements, oh, etc. It? It's very, very you messy. Realize. I'd need no. to know my bank account number as well. You know, what I even for a couple I know and that's a good point because some one person inevitably handles all the finances and then the other person is just I wouldn't have a clue the, honestly yeah. I just know I just get frustrated if I go and fill up with gas and the card gets rejected I know you know what I think is a good exercise for even good couples with a healthy relationship is actually to walk through the process because even I'm not suggesting you want to you know put push that on them at all but actually when you sit down and look and evaluate it you might actually benefit in ways that you went um, you might increase the strength of your relationship at the end by looking at what's on the table. Probably not going to chance it, but thanks for the advice. <laughs> um, kids in a relationship, this is where it gets a bit, you know, difficult as mm. well. Let's try and stick with the financial side of things yep. there. How does that normally get settled? Well, depending on um, who's taking care of the children, the pre taking custody of the children, um, that, uh, if they're staying with the mother, which is, tends to be the case, then somebody will be required to pay child support payments. So that's worked out on a formula which you can find through IRD. In a lot of other cases, it's a shared care arrangement. Um, um, in which case um, it's um, you, you might be eligible for working for families benefits that's very generous particularly for working uh, parents there's housing allowances um, again 
depending on the amount of time, it's not always a 50-50 split. Some partner could be supplementing the other person's income as well. So again, you'll be able to figure out all those calculations and formulas on the IRD website. There's probably a dominant perception that guys tend to get the, the hardest road with this. As you mm. mentioned earlier, women may have sacrificed their career. Right. Um, the, there is a perception that they always kind of get the house mm. and that they've got more sway to get the kids and then yeah. dad's left without the house and paying for all the maintenance. Is that yes. true? in your experience? Uh, you know, for, in my case, I think we took the high road. It was 50-50 um, with the childcare and the div division of assets wasn't uh, at issue. So, no, and our, I, I think ours was an exceptional uh, divorce. But you certainly do hear horror stories out there of, you know, guys who are left high and dry without access to the kids. But again, you know, know your rights and uh, do your research. So there's some great materials on the family, um, the legal uh, New Zealand Legal Society website and sort of website there's a raft of other things for free on Google under New Zealand so you know know your rights know the rules and just try to take the emotion out of it where possible sound very sound advice thank you very much man